So basically, I'll start off at eight. You need 36 points to, to break up in between them all, right? So they all start off at eight with zero, cost zero, and modifiers negative one. So right now, I'm gonna go to my character sheet right here. So now I will divide 36 among uh, the attribute scores. So there are my strength scores with the accompanying modifiers. Once again, quick recap, whatever score you want, that'll be the cost of your 36, and then you'll get the accompanying modifier. So basically, you're just gonna aim for whatever modifier you want, you'll see what score you need, and then you'll see the cost in the middle. Next is your character's origin. That's broken up into two parts, your character's talent and their specialty, which is right here on the character sheet, on the top right corner next to the spycraft, right there. So then you go to page 19 of the PDF and look through all the talents see which one suits your character best and they come with a bunch of benefits uh pretty much self-explanatory they'll tell you what you need to do i'm going to pick fierce which gives him plus two strength and minus two charisma so let's find fierce right here boom so my strength score is going to go up by two and my charisma is going to go down by two score wise we go back to the chart we saw earlier let me figure out what our new scores are so my my current strength is 18 and then charisma is six so 18 gives me plus four and the six gives me negative two four Charisma is negative two now. And then of course up here, you're gonna write in what you pick. So I'll put in Fierce right here. So just make sure that not only do you get your score modifiers, but you also get your other benefits. Like for instance, Fierce comes with the, you gain plus one insight bonus with a little blah, blah, and then threat range, blah, 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 blah. However, you wanna note that, write it down somewhere in your character sheet. Don't forget that shit. So after you pick your talent, you can go to PDF 23 and you can pick your specialty. So for my guy, I'm gonna pick out of the list, Soldier of Fortune. So I'm gonna write on Soldier of Fortune right there, and then we will move on. And of course, Soldier of Fortune, these come with uh, feats. So for instance, mine comes with any ranged. So I can pick out any ranged feat from the feat section I like, and otherwise you'll find all your feats that you gain in the feat section. You can just find it in the glossary. So I can pick any ranged combat feat, and I also gain a tactical weapon proficiency. So what that means is I just go to my Second page, tactical weapon proficiency. So you get your proficiencies. Forte, no, but I'm proficient, so boom. So for the rest of the features that come with Soldier of Fortune, I'm just gonna make a note of them, such as the one acquaintance grade contact and the plus one bonus with attack checks made as part of an auto buyer action. Step three, you'll pick your class. So your base classes are advocate, explorer, face man, hacker, intruder, point man, scientist, scout, sleuth, snoop, soldier, wheelman. So first thing we find is that vitality is 1d12 plus con modifier per level. So what that means is only at level one when you're finding out your vitality do you use the maximum number of the die you're given in your class section plus or minus your con modifier. So for my soldier it was a d12 plus my con modifier. So it's 12 the max number on the die given at level one plus your con mod. So my vitality is actually 14. And at every level your character's wound points are equal to his constitution score at every level. So my con score is 15, my wounds are 15. So that means that you get to choose six weapon categories that you want to be proficient with uh, when you start the game. Now I could choose to be proficient in six separate categories, but I could instead sacrifice one of my other picks and go into a forte. So what that means is I can go to my proficiencies and since that was from my other thing, so so for instance, I want to be proficient with rifles and out of my six, I could spend one of them instead of getting from another category, I can choose to get a forte. And what the forte means is you get a plus one whenever using that weapon category in the future forever. You'll always just be having a plus one added to all your rolls. So for instance, I always want a plus one whenever I'm firing rifles. I not, I not only want to cancel out the, the negative attributes to using it untrained with the proficiency, but I also want to be have a forte and plus one. Here are my six picks. The tactical proficiency came from one of my origin picks. So I chose, out of my six, I chose seven machine guns, rifles with a forte, that's three, and then handgun and forte of handgun, four, five, and then my last one went to explosives. And that's my six proficiency, so you're ready to go with that. Next, we'll fill in your wound points, which is next to your vitality on the character sheet. A character receives a number of wound points equal to his constitution score. So we'll go back to my character. My constitution score is 15, so I can suffer 15 wounds. Next, we'll take a look at the level dependent benefits on PDF 28. We'll figure out your action dice. So if you're level one, your action dice is 3d4. So then it'll, this chart will always tell you as you level up, 
your starting action dice pool. So mine will be 3d4. So you go to your action dice on the right side of the sheet under the spy crafting next to gear check bonus. So I get 3d4. So my total will be 3. The die type is d4. And I simply just keep track of how many I've spent during the game. Each game, your dice pool refreshes. So you can't just sit on a big pile of action dice. So back at the soldier page, we have our vitality, our starting weapon proficiency is taken care of. And we'll go down to class skills. Class skills come with whatever class you choose. So for instance, mine are athletics, drive, intimidate, notice, profession, resolve, search, survival, and tactics. So all that means is for class skills, you're gonna want to, whatever it tells you, you just go to your character page and put a, a put a little check mark on that. So for instance, mine would be athletics, drive, and so on and so forth. I would just get all that and then fill in the marks. So there you go. You just put a check on your class skill and everything your little character page tells you to that you're trained in for your skills. So noted profession resolve, blah, blah, blah. So that's all filled out. Next, we'll find out how many max ranks you have. So max ranks is right here, right in the top right corner of the skill section on the first page. Max ranks, that is simply your career level plus three. So my career level is one because I'm level one, plus three, so it's four. Next, we're gonna take care of skill points at level one, which is right here, in your, it'll be in your class section. For the soldier class, my skill points at level one is four plus my intelligence modifier times four. Four plus my intelligence mod, my intelligence mod is negative one, so it's three times four. So I have 12 points and my max ranks is 4. So I have 12 skill points to spend. So basically that'll be in the rank section where you'll spend them. But of course, out of the 12, I can only put a max of 4 in each category. So let's say I want to be good at athletics. So I would put, well, I want to just jam in 4. I could put anywhere between 1 to 4. For this case, I'm going to put all 4 into athletics. That's 4 out of my 12. And I'm going to be good at intimidating. So I'm going to put 4 more into uh, intimidate. And I'm going to put my last 4 ranks in drive just because I want to be a good driver. All right. So basically how that works is your tribute mod will be on the right of that. So if you want to go through and write them in or just, you know, remember, I don't care. For example, athletics, it says strength slash con. So then you go over to a tribute mod and you find the mod for your strength and con, and you fill that in there. So as I said, my attribute mod, so my strength mod was four, and my con mod was two. My max, my ranks I put in there is four. So then your skill bonus will be filled in right there. You'll have your total. Unless you want, unless you have a miscellaneous modifier and error range, or the threat range, don't really worry about that too much. Actually, you know what, just ignore that. Just worry about your attribute mods and your ranks. And basically what that means is you're just gonna do some simple math. So your ranks is four, four plus four is eight, and four plus two is six. So then you're just gonna fill it in on the after the equal sign to the left of it. So whenever you make a athletics roll and it calls for more towards a strength related expertise, I guess, you'll add your D20 roll plus the eight. Or if you're doing an athletics check and it relates more towards your con, then you're gonna want to do six plus whatever you roll on your D20. And that's that. Result cap, ignore that shit. For me, I ignore the result cap most of the time. I don't really give a shit about that, but if you wanna look into that, feel free to. So if you go back to your class skills where it tells you how many skill points you get at level one, and right underneath that, it'll tell you how many points you get uh, every time you level up. So for me, my skill points at each additional level, for me, for my soldier, would be four plus my intelligence modifier. So I'm definitely gonna have to invest some points into my intelligence score to upgrade the modifier. But right underneath that, you'll find your character's core ability. So for me, I get an, I get accurate, which just comes with some really good bonuses. I will write that down somewhere on my character sheet. Just note that. And then right after that, you'll find your class abilities. In most cases, these abilities will come as you level up. So make sure to always come back here and check. For instance, I only get one class ability on level one. The rest of them come as I level up. Make sure to check back on your class abilities frequently as you level up because you do gain more as you level up so for instance i only get fight on to start so again just make sure to write that down somewhere keep note of that so if you keep going in your character section in the book you'll find a table and labeled uh your character class make sure you are doing the right table because sometimes the tables are kind of mixed in with other classes in the next to them i don't know why i just could be confusing for certain classes. So just check it out. So for instance, I'm level one, so my BAB, which is base attack bonus, is plus one. My fortitude is one. Reflex save. These are the saves, by the way. So fortitude, reflex, and will saves. Those are your pluses. So this basically just sums up what you would get if you don't want to feel like reading, but you still have to scroll up to find out the details about it anyway. But let's fill in everything about, let's fill in the rest of for our character. So my BAB is plus one. So you just go down to your character. Right underneath all your stuff, you'll find your base attacks right here in the section right above skills. So my current base attack is one, so I fill all the ones in there. And then you'll find your fortitude saves bonuses. So fortitude, reflex, and will. So one, zero, and two. My base saves are one, zero, and two for fortitude, reflex, and will. And then if we go to continue, my defense is zero and my initiative is plus two. 
So you just go up to the middle here and my class where it says class, you would write that in for the defense, which for me it's zero. And then my initiative is right below that. I get a two. And then let's fill out the rest of this, shall we? So right next to your defense, you have class, which we just got. When it says dex, that's your dex modifier. So you would just go to your left, see where your deck score is. You find the company modifier, you fill it in there where your defense is. So uh, my dex modifier is two. I write in a two. And if you go down to initiative, you do that again. It says dex. My dex mod is two. I put another two. Size modifier comes if you have it, if your size is abnormally large or abnormally small. Or we'll get to armor later. But for now, I, my defense would be 10, 12. And my initiative currently would be four plus my d20. Next, you're going to want to pick interests. Now at level zero, your character gains two interests. After And then after level one, each character gains additional interests as shown on the table I had shown earlier. It'll tell you how many bonus interests you get whenever you look at that as you level up. You'll see it. Now when the GC and the player agree that interest relates to the topic of a knowledge check that the player's character is making, the character gains a plus one bonus with that check. When the GC and the player agree that the interest relates to a skill check the player's character is making, the character gains a plus one bonus with action die rolls made to boost that check. When the GC determines that the character and the NPC share a related interest and it applies to the current situation or discussion, it'll help them with the disposition towards each other. When a character spends one or more hours indulging in one of their interests, he heals stress damage at two times the standard rate. No combination of interests may grant the character more than plus two bonus with any one check, and no character may benefit from a greater number of interests per, per session equal to his starting action dies. What the fuck ever. So some examples of interest include board games, classic cars, clubbing, conspiracy theory, creative writing, criminology, fine cuisine, fishing, forensics, formal dancing, gambling, gardening, golf, guns, hiking, hunting, internet surfing, jogging, literature, playing tourists, politics, puzzle solving, religion, role playing games, shopping, schmoozing, stamp collecting, weightlifting, wine tasting, woodworking, any sport in the world, professional or otherwise, and specific gear by type, computers, antique cars, etc. Feel free to choose any of those you wish. You can find it on PDF 54. But again, feel free to also make up and pick any out of the blue that you can think of. Okay, so I'm just going step by step. So the next thing you'd want to do is your subplots. Now you can do this now or you can just make a note of it and do it later. The lives of spycraft characters are often peppered with private concerns and lingering business. Much of this personal baggage is simulated with subplots. Unlike main missions, which the game controller creates, subplots are voluntary character opt options that allow you to tailor your character's history, enemies, and challenges to your liking and receive some extra experience in the process. The game controller may reject any subplot if, if he feels it isn't a suitable test of your character or his team. All subplots should involve an element of personal risk, lest they become more, mere background noise. You'll get access to more subplots as you level up, which you can find in that level up chart. So just get one subplot or think of a bunch and for future use and then let your game controller know what your subplot is. For great examples on subplots, you can go to the bottom of PDF page 55. It'll tell you subplot descriptions and then it'll give you a fuck ton of examples with the effects, plot details, and how to complete your subplots. I recommend checking it out. The way to find out your character's stress damage threshold represents his ability to withstand the rigors of combat and other tense situations he is equal to his wisdom score. So my stress is my wisdom score, so wisdom is eight. My score is eight, rather. My stress damage threshold is eight. Character subdual damage threshold represents his ability to withstand knockout attacks and effects. Each is equal to your character's constitution score. My constitution score is 15. So my subdual threshold is 15. So let's go back to your first page in your character sheet and fill out the attribute mods. For fortitude, you'll have your con mod. For reflex, you'll have your dex mod. And for will, you'll have your wisdom mod. Okay, so there you go. You'll have your con, dex, and wisdom modifier added to the attribute mod for your fortitude, reflex, and will saves. And that'll give you your bonuses whenever you're rolling for saving throws. So my bonuses are three, two, and one. Just below that, you'll have your base attacks. So let's find out the attribute mods for that. So you'll have strength, strength, and dex. So my strength mod is four, and my dex mod is two. Four, four, and two, my base attack was one. And then you just put in your totals, five, five, and three. Remember, no scores, it's always your mods. So next we'll fill out your special check bonuses. Your character's knowledge check bonus is used to determine whether he knows something that you, the player, do not. It is equal to his career level plus his intelligence modifier. And you're just gonna fill in your character's level for each of those. You'll have your knowledge check bonus, your request check, and your gear check. So that's all kind of self-explanatory. I don't see why they didn't do that with the rest of the fucking character sheet, but anyway. So just fill in your career level, so whatever level your character is, you fill that in there, and then you'll just put in the accompanying mod. So knowledge check would be intelligence, charisma for request check, and then wisdom for, for gear check. So for me, since my mods are really shitty, I'll have a zero, a negative one, and another negative one. 
But let's quickly go over what these mean. Your character's request check bonus is used when he wants to require gear picks outside of mission's intel phase. And your character's gear check bonus is used when your character wants to acquire common items outside the mission intel phase. Now if you're working with an organization, by default every character starts with 2 reputation. But if you're working freelance, you'll start with 100,000 in net worth, and you'll acquire more as you complete missions. Next we'll do your languages. At level 1 your character gains 1 culture skill focus at no cost, allowing him to identify his native region and communicate with natives of his homeland and surrounding territories. So let's say my guy's from Russia, so I will be putting an X right over Eastern European Russia. So at career level 1 the character automatically gains 1 focus for each focus skill. What that means is, say if when you were filling it out I told you you had drive, well you get to select 1 focus for that. And if you and that and that all determines with the black square. If there's a black square, it'll say this is a focus skill. So cultures, drive, anything with a black square next to it has a focus skill attached to it. So level one, if you have any of those selected, so let's just drive like I do, or I also have profession, I get to go down to the bottom of the page and I get to choose one that I know. So I'm gonna choose heavy ground vehicles as a known. I'm gonna choose a profession that my character is good at. Uh, so I'm gonna say he was good at, be he's like an ex-terrorist. For every four ranks put into a focus skill under the skill tree, you gain another focus. So what that means is, right now, by default I have uh, one drive, but I put four into drive, so I get another drive. So I, now I wanna be doing, uh, let's do fucking uh, aircraft. So now I'm good at aircraft. So under drive, since it's related to a focus skill, if I put another four in the future, I can then pick another focus, or I can choose to make one of these current focuses a forte. Next, you can select your character's age. So now we have on page 62 in the PDF, we have the aging effects table. So if your age is one to 11, you're a child, and then you have your accompanying, accompanying tribute modifiers such as a negative three to strength and con, dex, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. That will help you determine what your modifiers are for whatever age you select. It can be really young, it can be really old, and play it up like that. 